Chalk is the pick after all. Welcome to Playing the Field, a Bachelor podcast. I'm Ryan Field, the sports anchor here at WABC in New York City. Longtime Bachelor fan, joined now by our usual favorites, Jen Matteris from WABC here in New York. She's our Bachelor insider and our Bachelor expert, Gina Sirico, out there at KABC in Los Angeles. Ladies, a whole lot to digest after really, I thought, a terrific finale. We thought Chalk was going to be the guy all along. That was kind of the prevailing opinion, especially once uh, my guy, <clears throat> Pascal, got sent home or sent himself home, I should say, last week or two weeks ago when that episode aired. But I guess first takes are, uh, I think Chalk was the guy we thought was going to be all along. And I also think that they seem the happiest at the end of the day. And when you talk about this show and what matters most, the ultimate happiness for the two people at the end is what matters the most. And I think, Jen, that we saw that with Joan and Chalk. Oh, for sure. I mean, all of Bachelor Nation and uh, Bachelor alumni, let's call them from the Golden Seasons, can't stop talking about how happy they are together and just how real their relationship is. So, I mean, I take their word for it. I mean, they seem happy. And especially in Good Morning America earlier today, they, they were so cute. Yeah. And I spoke with uh, Joan and Chuck a little while ago um, for... Um, to send out to our OTV stations, to our ABC OTV stations. And they are just, they're so cute. Um, they are so sweet. And I'm really happy we're going to get to all chat with them tomorrow um, for, you know, to to just digest, to just go through everything, to get through all, all the details that we want. And listen, we are going to talk to Joan and Chalk. Uh, two episodes of Playing the Field this week. Uh, aren't we all so lucky? But we wanted to, we could have combined this into one episode, but we really wanted to give our audience uh, our own takes on the finale before we actually talk to Joan and Chalk themselves. And obviously that's a conversation that we're really looking forward to having. And speaking of conversations, Nancy is once again, somehow she just got a free trip to Bora Bora. Is that how this played out? Uh, just for a couple of appearances? I mean, sign me up for that. But she, once again, was somebody that Joan could, conf could confide in. We saw that again in this episode. And the thing that keeps standing out to me is that Joan keeps saying that she feels unlovable. And I want to know from a female perspective, because I'm looking at it and saying, Joan, you have two guys that are fawning over you, that are willing to do anything, that are ready to propose to you. I think this is my take that it's a little Pascal PTSD because I ultimately think that Pascal was her favorite to win. I think that was her Ooh. pick that she wanted all along. She saved him for the last date. And I think she was genuinely crushed when he left the show. And she needed to hear that from Nancy that, listen, you have two great guys here that are fighting for you. And it's almost like she needed to be picked up off the mat. If you're looking at her facial expressions and watching her reaction to all of this, I really felt like she wanted Pascal to be the guy. And that's the guy that I thought was going to be the choice all long didn't end up happening i felt like she had to regroup and then reassess her relationships then with guy and chalk and ultimately chose chalk jen that's how i saw it i don't know how you saw it oh gosh i mean okay everyone thinks i'm a little too hard on pascal i get that but uh gina can shed some insight maybe on things they discussed in the past but also he had some hot takes on uh on our boy chalk there and wasn't wasn't so uh kind in his words about him should, on should we share those with people what he said uh, i don't have them to pull up, but it was it was basically that he was just all too came on too strong you know maybe there's not that many women in kansas Co comments like that i just sort of like Ooh. i mean there were competitors for the same woman at one point so i get that but but i think that it just short, sort of shook joan in that she thought like she was in the driver's seat and she was. And then all of a sudden someone pulls a 180 on her. I think it shook her confidence a little bit. And she was just worried. Well, if he felt like that, maybe the other guys could think that too. And I could lose the one that I love who was apparently chalk, but um, she was clearly having fun with Pascal. Maybe she was still not ready to rule him out, but I don't think she was decided on him. Before we get to Gina's take, Pascal said about Chalk, he was all over her to the point where he was like a stalker. Maybe in Wichita, there is no women. 
And he was just saying how he felt he was mentioning things that were inappropriate, like which side of the bed do you want to sleep on? Um, uh, let's leave here. Let's get out of here when they were on the group dates. So, again, we didn't see a lot of this pettiness on the show, but. Clearly, there was some pettiness going on behind the scenes. Um, but Gina, as you've pointed out uh, correctly in all of these episodes that we've talked about, all, at the end of the day, this is a competition, and, and Chalk is fighting for what he wanted, and he ultimately got what he wanted. Well, yeah, and, and Pascal wouldn't do the same. You know, he was, he, you know, he did what he did on dates, and they were fine, and they had fun, but I think he just assumed that it would be him. And to be fair, like, if you look at Chalk, he, he said it to me today, you know, he's like, yeah, some of the guys, you know, mentioned, like, they knew immediately that we were a couple. They knew, like, they knew, they could read, they, they may not have liked what they saw, because it meant that it, there wasn't an, it wasn't going to be them in the end. But they all saw the connection between Chalk and Joan. And, you know, sorry to this man. Um, but Pascal wasn't the one. And the fact of the matter is, is he was he was he had his walls up he was being guarded so if he wasn't going to be vulnerable and open with Joan why you know like why is he gonna fall he's gonna fall somebody else for doing the same I think that's I mean let's just talk about that for a second as for Joan um I think that we have all been in this dating world enough well maybe not Jen anymore but when we were you know when when we were all in you know the dating world even if you were with somebody and you didn't like them as much as you kind of hoped if they dump you or if they say i don't want to be with you or i don't love you even if it even if you in the end you knew it was right it was you know the right move anyway it still hurts and so i think that's kind of where joan was coming from where like him you know her saying yeah i you know i love you as a friend but i don't love you love you like it it hurts, and I think that's where that that um, little shakeup came from. That was that's just my take. I agree. Yeah. And, and listen, and that that's a fair point, and that certainly may have been the case. All that to say, Nancy certainly helped her get back on track. Which then she finally sees her family, her son, and the son's fiance, mm-hmm. and the daughter, oh, yeah. and and her husband. I think that's how it's set up. Yes. Um, and Chalk gets to meet them. And my two big takeaways from Chalk meeting the family were, I love that he kissed her in front of the kids. Although the look on the son's face was kind of like, you know. They were just he, like, let's get it over with. Now. Yeah, but he, but you wonder if he'd ever seen another man kiss his mom besides his dad. So I don't think so. I don't, I think, don't so. think so. So uh, imagine how jarring that had to have been to see that. Um, as someone whose parents have been married for 50 years, I can't imagine another man just casually kissing my mom and how I would react to that. So I think that was a very interesting dynamic. And I also thought he had the line of the episode when the his son was talking about, or her son was talking about, you know, replacing my dad. And Chalk said, I'm not going to replace your dad. I'm going to love your mom the rest of my life. And we're going to have this great adventure the rest of our lives, but I'm not going to replace your dad. Kind of paraphrasing. And to me, Jen, I thought that really showed to his fan, to her family that Chalk was genuine and frankly, a guy that they could see their mom being happy with the rest of their lives. They definitely liked him. I mean, I think it took them a second and I think it was very jarring when he did that kiss right off the bat. I was like, ooh, maybe you should have closed with the kiss after they were a little <laughs> yeah, more right. comfortable. Don't like, open I'm with not the saying, kiss. Close like, with the kiss. Because like, what if that was really off-putting to them and they couldn't get past it? You That's know a good I mean? point. Like, That's I don't point. know. Like, if someone did that right off the bat, would you have been able to like get your head out of that mind space? I don't know. Or was it the right move? I mean, he came on strong and Joan likes that. So maybe her kids like that too. I don't know. I don't know. I guess they did, but I I, I think they had a good connection. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, I mean, when he said, you know, get, let's get it out of the way. I think that, look, they know that ultimately their mom was looking for love. And so kissing is part of it. That's going to be part of it. And if they're going to get married, this is what's going to happen. I will say, Ryan, I totally get it. Um, Like my parents were both were married for 52 years. My mom passed in 2018 and literally in early 2020, 
my dad came to me and said, Hey, I met someone who I, I might want to take on a date, but I'm not sure. And how do you feel about that? And I was like, you know what? If it's going to be companionship for you and it's something that's going to make you happy, then by all means do. Um, but yeah, I thought when they were in that moment, I, I thought about myself and my own reactions of like, Ooh, what would I have done? How yeah. Would have right. Reacted? We would have, you know, it was, a, it was an, it was an awkward conversation, but you know, when it comes down to, you know, the loved one who is left moving on, you know, there are conversations that have to be had. And ultimately, you know, like I said to my dad, I wanted him to be happy. I think they want their mom to be happy. And they said that to her. Well, I think that's a very mature response on your part. And it was a very mature response on her kid's part. And I thought everybody handled it as well as they could. And that ultimately set the table for their final date. And, you know, Chalk again shows what a great guy he is. He has the little heart locket and says, we talked about getting a place in New York. Let's go pick a place out together because she lives in Maryland. He lives in Kansas, uh, not exactly in the middle, but he's definitely coming more to her side of the country. Um, and listen, for those of us that live here in New York City, it's it's certainly one of the best places in the entire world. So uh, now they get to talk about their future together there. And I think, Jen, for Joan, that was kind of like, OK, Chalk has thought about our future together, my place in it. And that really kind of helped seal the deal in terms of her feelings and love for Chalk. I love that they were actually talking about where they were going to live and what yeah. their plans would be after this experience. Cause everyone said that's where Gary and Teresa kind of went wrong a little bit. They didn't fully yep. think it through. And I know Teresa has come out since then and said that wasn't every bit of the story and they just didn't really know each other well enough. Um, but it seems like he's very thoughtful and he is learning to be himself around her more. That was something she mentioned. She wanted him to not be so reserved and proper and, you know, not worry about saying the right things and getting in trouble, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so um, I was happy to see, I mean, this is jumping ahead a bit, but that they did during their happy couple dates just seem to really um, grow together as a couple and that they're doing so well. It's so great. Yeah. They told me, you know, during the, when they were in the after part, in the after the final rose part, and they were talking about their, um, their happy couple things, they were telling me today that they're very competitive, like with each other, where it's like, oh, I got this first piece. They were talking about doing puzzles together. They're like, oh, I got this, you know, I got this piece, I got this piece. And so they're, they're competitive, but like not in a mean spirited way. They're just like, right. it's fun. And, you know they have fun with each other and they're really getting to know each other. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for them. And then in New York as well, um, they said that they're both, they both love New York. They both, um, Chalk has always wanted to live in a big city and New York is the one. And uh, Joan said the same thing that she really loves it there. So that's why they chose New York. And those are some of the conversations that they were having, you know, about their future. And that is also, that was also a, an indication, I think for us as viewers, like, this is this is it. This is the this is the real deal here. Yeah, and listen, we can't wait to talk to them about moving to New York, and we better have them in studio at some point when they finally uh, make the move here to the Big Apple. And I thought it was very to Jen's point when we skip ahead to their conversation with Jesse, uh, very endearing when they talked about how they do crossword puzzles, uh, and and I thought that was just something that okay. This is a couple that's in their 60s and ready to live out the rest They're of their so lives, cute. traveling and doing crossword puzzles and all those things. Um, the sad part was, was it turned out that Guy was not part of her puzzle. And I was hoping once Pascal left that he was going to be the final piece to the puzzle. Um, but it ended up not being the case. And to me, and again, you guys can speak to the history uh, more on this show than I can uh, with my very bad memory. Uh, <laughs> but to me, that was one of the more crushing moments in all of the Bachelor things that I've ever seen uh, in all of the Bachelor seasons. A guy who had told his sisters that he felt like this was kind of his last chance at love and was, you know, finally ready. He could finally see himself loving someone and what a big deal that was. And he told Joan that he was ready to tell her kids that he wanted to marry her. And the fact that he was shaking 
and just having an absolute breakdown um, was nothing short of gut wrenching. And and frankly, I'm getting the feels even just talking about it right Aww. now because anybody anybody who's been in that position who has loved someone unconditionally and found out that they are not the person for them uh, is a very, very tough spot to be in. And I thought those emotions were raw. I thought they were real. And you could see kind of the Jones expression on her face. She'd almost not become like stone face, but you could already tell that she had given her heart to somebody else. And that to me was just absolutely like rip your heart out kind of stuff and frankly to me again one of the most real moments Jen in the history of this franchise yeah um I I thought so too he really was all in on her and um to his credit you know he put it all out there I was glad that he said everything he wanted to say as far as we know um even during the after the final rose live show portion, you know, he got to ask her, was there anything he did? Is there anything he should have done differently? Um, and she said, no, I mean, it's just it's tough. They're under the gun with the time. And uh, she moved faster with uh, chalk relationship wise. And she's like, I thought it was interesting that she was like, you know, maybe in the real world, but, you know, in bachelor world, uh, there's just not enough time. And uh, he's a great, he seems like a great guy. And it was really hard to see that because he just, he wanted it so badly. He really, I, I, I think he had to re, I mean, the hardest part about a breakup, I always thought was just, you have to wipe that future away and just reimagine what your life's going to be like. And you have no clue who it's with and it's with yourself again. <laughs> so it's, um, that's tough, you know, that's a tough thing to, to refocus on. Yeah. And, you know, and his, his journey was so interesting too, because yeah, he definitely was that guy who was there for everybody in the house. Um, you know, the moments with Charles, like really just were so sweet and kind. And that was just, that was him all the time. Apparently it was what I've, what I've been told from, you know, the guy, you know, the guys in the house and chalk, you know, today, especially he was saying it as well. Like he really was there for everyone. And I, and he does seem like just a great guy. And for Joan, um, I, I it's so hard because this show, obviously, it is all about timing, as you said, Jen, and as, as they all said. And, you know, if you're not, you know, like think back to last season with Marcus, it was a slow burn and he couldn't get there. And Jonathan, too. He could, just couldn't get there. You know, it wasn't it was a slow burn and, and slow burns don't work on this particular show um and so I mean I'm glad that Guy has now like kind of opened up to the fact that he can love again and you know that has it's helping him this experience is helping him um could he be our next golden bachelor I think so maybe maybe you know out of all the prospects I think yeah he could definitely be that guy um so to speak guy, no pun intended He's handsome. No pun intended. He really is. <laughs> well, you know, we'll be seeing, you know how, you know, with when the, with the younger guys, the younger bachelors, they're all like the, you know, showering, you know, scenes and like shirtless in the pool or right. whatever. We're going to get a lot of that if we get Guy as a, as a golden bachelor. I'm just saying. Ooh. And, and the female audience, <laughs> I have a feeling, will not be disappointed. Um, the, 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 he got a lot of um, oohs and ahs and uh, a lot of cheers from the female audience that was in attendance for the final after the final rose last night uh and again i thought one of gina kind of piggybacking on your point i thought one of my favorite moments of the season was when he did the mansion men with captain kim and you know when nobody else wanted to do it like there was guy just being there um to rise to the occasion and make sure that kim wasn't doing it alone and that that if nothing else, just speaks to the type of guy that guy is. Uh, and I would love for him to be um, the next golden bachelor. That would be, yeah. that would be very cool. I did think it was interesting when uh, Jesse, I'm sorry, when Joan came out with Jesse and guy, when she says, maybe we could double date sometime. <laughs> I, I, was know. Like, I was like, Whoa, <laughs> Joan said, has really turned the page here. I don't I, think guy's ready to hear that. <laughs> I said to Jen, I was like, you know what? And we wrote it in our recap too. Like, 
I'm like, I think he was smiling through that, but I, I don't know that that's something that's going to happen. No, I mean, I'm I guessing don't think that would happen. not happen. Yes. But here's the thing about Guy. I do think, I think that the way, like, I think his marriage ended and there was a lot of turmoil in between the end of his marriage and then him coming on the show. And I think, I'm glad that he had this opportunity and this experience because I do feel like, you know, everyone's talked about how it's been healing. I think it was definitely healing for him. As much as he helped heal everybody else, I think yep. it was also very healing for Guy. So that, that's a great point. Him. That's that's a great point. And I think a lot of the guys on this show um, were kind of uh, in their own healing journey in a lot of respects. And most of these guys came out so much better for it, having gone through this experience than maybe even that they thought they would, both from a, a personal standpoint and, and maybe a standpoint of them finding, being able to find love again and being optimistic about that. So I think uh, so many good things came from this season, which culminated with arguably the best backdrop ever for a proposal. Uh, Bora Bora, we were messaging, I wish our audience could be uh, privy to our uh <laughs> Uh, bachelor podcast Jackson. group chat um yeah i mean bora bora i mean if that's not on the top of everybody's list after watching this uh i don't know what to tell you because that looks absolutely insane and uh i thought chalk nailed it by saying i'm not here to replace your husband or not replace your husband. She, he said i'm gonna do um i'm gonna do good by john's memory and i'm gonna love you for the rest of your life and I thought that was just such a nice touch. Again, Chalk hitting all the right notes. And then Joan finally was able to say that she loved him. And I thought her speech was good. And the setting and everything else, Jen, I just thought it was about as perfect as perfect could be. It really was. Like, I was a little worried when he came kind of like right out of the gate talking. Because usually she would start the conversation so that he knows he's the one. And I was like, does he know guys Connor? No, he like, doesn't know. know. You know, guy. like he doesn't uh, know, but he's so he was so nervous. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he, you know, he did his whole spiel and then Joan could say you're the one and he could propose. Um, it was an, it was a really great proposal and, um, I'm glad she said yes, especially because I think there's a lot of speculation that she might just end this season with a boyfriend, you know, and that's fine right. to end with a relationship and not rush into getting married, but who's to say they aren't going to be engaged for a while. Who knows? You know, we'll see how that goes. Um, but they seem very happy, and I loved the way it went. And I especially loved the phone call with her mother after. That yeah. was very sweet. She's like, it oh, you're a good-looking so couple. Yeah. I know she was so happy and surprised at the ring. I was like, oh, yeah. Mary, I love you. And you know what? We didn't even talk about this, and they didn't even really harp on this much last night, but the fact that his mom passed away, and then he came right back to be with Joan, Chalk did, like three days later. So I guess looking back at it, that nothing else, if nothing else, Gina should tell you how he felt about this woman. And he was ready to, quote unquote, risk it all for her. Well, I'll tell you a little bit of my conversation that I had with them today. And we can, um, you know, expand on it tomorrow when we talk to them. He told me that when he went home, his step, like he was, you know, people were asking him about the show, obviously, and how he felt and all of that. And he was talking about how much he loved this woman. Um, how he really cared about her at that point. And his stepfather, um, his mom's husband said, you need to go back. We got this here. You need to go back. If this is something that you're really like, if your heart's really in this and you're ready to, you know, to move on and, and, and have this woman be in your life, go back. And so that's what gave him, that's what made him kind of go back to, you know, come back to the show so quick, you know, and as you'll recall, Joan at the time was worried about whether, I mean, what was, like, whether he was going to come back at all, because when right. she left, you know, when she left on Golden Bachelor, she couldn't come back, but, and so she was worried that he was not going to come back, that Chalk wasn't going to come back, but he did, and I think that was another moment of, like, really sealing the deal for them. Matthew in, in Jen's season really felt like that should have been him, too, when he came back, when he came yeah. to New Zealand. Matthew! I was just going to say, you didn't do the voice. You didn't do the voice. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew was hoping he could have the same result. No such luck. No such luck. But, I mean, listen, they finally come out. 
uh, with Jesse, live audience, millions watching around the world uh, as the uh, their first public appearance as an engaged couple. I thought they looked, uh, they were glowing. I thought they were energized. I thought they looked happy. And uh, most of all, Jen, I just thought the fit was very comfortable, like watching them together interact. Uh, a far cry from uh, Jen and Devin sitting on that couch uh, at the end of the last season that we saw. Uh, a we far needed this. Cry. Yeah, a far <laughs> cry. We, we, we needed did need this. Yeah, we, we this needed, was a we needed to heal. Yeah. We yeah. needed to heal. <laughs> we needed to heal. So this is a healing it, season it, for it, everyone. It, it, yeah, it was a healing season for everybody and, and really, um, really just such a beautiful moment there when they were there with Jesse at the end. Yeah, and I love that they got a trip to Disney World because it'll be a really great bonding experience for their two families to come together and get to know each other even better. And Disney's so fun. And, you know, Gina likes to take credit for this whole relationship because she Can, was third wheeling on this date at Disney Disneyland. Out? I'm glad you brought this up. I they mentioned the that. Was, was that. Was it in the after the final rose yes, when they said yes. it was their Disney World date? That real or Disneyland date, kicked I should things say. Off, yeah. Yeah, that really kicked things off. And I was like, are they gonna bring Gina out right now onto the couch? Justice As, of no. the peace for the wedding, Gina? Yeah, justice <laughs> of the peace. I have already lobbied for my invitation to the wedding. So I'm hoping that I get that. I didn't get what? the invite to the, the engagement party last night. They had a they had an engagement party after after the final rose last night, but but let's, let's be real. let me ask you this. I haven't asked you this. You're you're the only person in the world that was there outside of the people that work on the show that were there on that date. Like, what were your observations that day? Did you see this as ultimately ending the way that it did? Did you have like a woman's intuition thing? Were you like, wow, I think these two are really good together? Like, I mean, you were there and you witnessed this whole thing. Well, when I, I saw them walking around, you know, and talking, you know, through the park and I thought, okay, they are very comfortable together. They do seem to, as we've kind of said, fit. Um, when I had a chance to talk with Chalk, um, you know, he sounded a little smitten. And, you know, we had that conversation here, you know, we played some of that conversation here on the podcast. And when I when I spoke with him, I was like, I think he's I think he's really into her. And mind you, that was only a couple of days right, exactly. after the show started filming. So it was very, very early on into the process. Um, so she hadn't, there was the first one on one date. Um, it was the first guy, like she was, the, he was the first guy that she really wanted to like take that time and get to know. And this was a great date for it. Um, Disneyland, you know, Joan said, you know, she wanted somebody to, you know, she wanted to see if, if she could find somebody who she could have fun with. And the old, that's like the ultimate place to do it is, you know, bring it to bring the kid out in yourself and like go to Disney, you know, Disneyland and ride the rides and, you know, watch R2D2, you know, hitting on your lady. And then you know, <laughs> and that's what he did, you know, but did and you so, see it from Joan's perspective though, too? You mentioned how yeah. Chalk was feeling. Okay. She, you did. She kind of, I mean, because she kind of, we hadn't seen this part yet, so I didn't get to share it with you guys, but she was talking about him. Like, yeah. You know, when he stepped out of that limo, I was like, okay. And she, you know, was told, she told me about, you know, the soup and it was something that really stood out to her. Um, you know, their whole interaction from night one really stood out to her. And that was why she wanted him to be the first one to get this one-on-one -on -one date. So I think she knew from the start that she had like a spark and then she, she got smiley when she was talking about him and having fun on the date and stuff. So ultimately, you know, yeah, I do feel like, and I told you guys this, I've said it a couple you of times. You told me, you, you were like, you were like, cause I, I was, I was bad. I was reading the spoilers, right? And the first spoilers that were out did not have chalk as the number one. Okay. And you were like, I don't know. They've got to be wrong because this guy, he's just, you know, and Gina was gushing about chalk. And I was like, why does she like chalk so much? Like he's great and all, but I don't know. I don't know. And then, you know, he obviously was ready time to went throw on. Hand. He was ready to throw yeah. hands with R2-D2. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and is, is, you know, stoic or whatever is he comes across, like he does let loose and have fun. And I think yeah. that was the perfect date for them. He also told me that he was afraid that they were on, I think, the Matterhorn, and they he was afraid that he was going to throw up on the <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're an event. He was telling me what an adrenaline junkie he was. 
And I was like, wait a minute, the adrenaline junkie is going to get nervous and throw it. He's like, I hope I, I hope I don't. So the worst date was, um, do you remember when Nick Vile did the zero gravity flight with, um, I think her name was Vanessa, the one that he picked or whatever. And she was like throwing up on the zero gravity thing. And I was like, that is my nightmare. Like, I don't want, I would never want to be on a date with somebody and just like be barfing and barfing. I could never go on this show because of all of the heights sort of like dates in the heights you know like jumping out of a plane jumping off of you know whatever that thing was in new zealand you know like just no gina <laughs> the, the, the one-on-one date card would come to the mansion and it would say gina let's take our love to new heights and gina would be like i'm out who wants to go i think, I'm good. I think I'm good can i wait and do the Caps next on. one <laughs> yeah, exactly. can i opt out of this one and go for the shopping one that always happens like can we make that happen please Oh, uh, too funny. We also found out in the GMA interview that Chalk had a cold and slept for a week. So uh, Joan also made it seem like he's kind of a wuss in some ways as well. So <laughs> yeah. maybe we shouldn't be surprised about the Matterhorn uh, in, in that respect. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we saw them have their happy ending and then they bring uh, our boy Grant out, who's going to be the new Bachelor, which premieres when, ladies? Uh, did we it's sometime in January? January 27th. 27th. January 27th. So we are still uh, more than two months away. Kind of a long break for us here in Bachelor Nation uh, it's to have about to wait. The same. It's about the same. I've, if you recall, Joey's season end, or started like end of January this year. I feel like this there's year. some there's some that have started in early January though. In the yeah, past, right. I like that, I'm, but my, it seems like yeah. lately they've got kind of gone later in later January. Yeah. Okay. Well, we mm. got a we got a full look at the trailer. I love seeing Joey in it. See the cameo of him with uh, with Grant. Um, and then I saw all the drama, and I'm gonna have to be honest with you, ladies. I, I, I said to myself, I'm like, I miss the golden franchise already because I am not mentally prepared to hear 25 women, um, you know, being catty and fighting and crying and, you know, whatever else was going on, backstabbing. Uh, I, I feel like we've we've gone off the feel good golden bachelor moments right back into uh, the sometimes swamp that is the bachelor and bachelorette. I mean, I guess it just shows that with age comes some maturity. I yeah, mean, right, it just exactly. it just basically comes down to the fact that, like, I think when you're younger, you don't have the perspective yet that if it's going to work out, it's going to work out. And I think that they think there's something they can do to win and, you know, steal people's attention and this and that. And it's not to say you shouldn't put yourself out there, but if you're putting yourself out there and getting the opportunities and everything there's nothing that somebody else is going to do if if you're the right one. So I, I don't know. I, I, I saw and had the same thoughts as you, Ryan. I was like, yeah, oh, no. I was like, here <laughs> we go. And, and Gina, <laughs> Gina, let's be honest. You know more about this show than anybody. They drink a lot more on those shows, right? I mean, there's a lot more <laughs> champagne flying. The, the, a lot of the women I saw, they did not seem sober in these clips. So I feel like that kind of plays a part in this as well. I feel like it's equal parts drinking on both. I mean, as you, you know, we've seen, you know, the guys on, on this season, you know, have a couple of cocktails. Mark was talking about it, you know, last week when he was saying, yeah, I needed a cocktail to just like kind of calm himself down on the first night. Like, so it's, it's ever present, but I do feel <laughs> like, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, it, this is just such a different that the golden part of this franchise is definitely more about the love um and but don't and you think it journey. raised the bar for the franchise though Gina don't you think people now want more about that and less about drama based on the success that we've seen from one season of the golden bachelor and one of the golden bachelorette I will say I, I I can speak for myself yes I want that I want the love story um sometimes you can get bogged down in the drama and it just gets to be too much and you're overshadowing what you're really there about. We've talked about this, which is the love. Um, I think that when you're putting a bunch of 20 something, I mean, think about how we all were in our twenties, not always the most rational when it came to love. Um, and it came in how it came to, you know, portraying yourself when you're trying to find love. Um, 
these women, you know, there was some woman, uh, you know, one of the girls was like, ooh, backstabbed, you did me dirty. And she was not boy. sober when she said that, by the way. I'm I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But all I know is she was <laughs> ticked off. Um, but I do feel like it's, it's more of a game when you're in your 20s and early 30s, love. And when you're older. Um, as someone who is older, when you are older, you um, you think of things differently. You think of life a little bit differently. You think about what you've been through and how you want to live out the rest of your life. And I think maybe they don't always think that way when you're, you know, you don't always think that way in your way when you're in your 20s. I agree with you on that. And I think a lot of that is going to rear its ugly head based on what we've seen in the trailer. And Jen, how about the other big moment from the trailer that stood out? It appeared that they were down to the final two, and Jesse says, I need to know who to bring out first, and Grant's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I that mean, was shocking. Yeah, you talk about a cliffhanger, and you're thinking, like, boy, did he really get down to the final two and not know who he was going to pick? Very well could happen. Yeah, I hope it's not another case of, like, he picks someone, and then a few months later, he's like, okay, yeah, I have to I go back over. to the other one, yeah. you know, the other girl. There was um, a, mes- happened there a, was a mesnic times. moment. A mesnic moment, right. Yeah, yeah, it's happened. And um, Ari, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Ari was right? there as well. Did we, yeah, find so... it, did we find it odd that the only uh, guy they had from uh, Grant, uh, from Jen season, was Akeem? I felt like he was kind of... Uh, <laughs> an odd person to have there for it's because uh, secret lives of mormon wives is airing <laughs> yeah, after there we go. Um, <laughs> after this next season of the bachelor which which i think speaks to the drama of that season because yeah. the, they're putting those together for a reason and i don't know if you guys have watched it i've admittedly only seen the first episode <laughs> and it's it's a it's a lot i mean i'm kind of surprised it, it, it's a it's a lot wait akeem is on that show no, no, but he but was you like, remember, Gina, you explain. Remember at, at, um, the mental all and they were showing a preview of it because it was premiering on. Hulu, yes. And Hakeem's face through the whole thing was like, like he was making these faces like, oh, my God, but, I can't. But believe that this couldn't have been be the reason he was show. in the audience last night, though. That couldn't could have been be. the reason. Maybe they I, want to remind us of him because maybe he'll be in a paradise coming up or something. Maybe. Well, he was okay. invited. He was invited. So remember after the spider incident. Right. I, I just felt like it was just odd that he was the only guy from Gen season in addition to Grant who was there. I, I just felt like maybe there should have been another couple guys there to kind of support Grant. I don't know. That was just me thinking if out loud. you also remember, I, I'm pretty sure I'm remembering this correctly. Hakeem said about the Grant pick, they were close. And Hakeem said that he really learned a lot from Grant. And, right. that, you know, from the time that they had together and, you know, he was like a man of faith and that was something they shared. And there was a lot of things that they shared. So I think that they're good friends. And so that makes, it made sense to me to have him there. You know what else I love from the trailer? What? Much like when he rode horses with Jen, they're on donkeys <laughs> in Grant's season. Damn, girl, you look good on that donkey. I can't <laughs> wait for him to say it. Oh, my God. Oh my you God. look good on that donkey. Stop the madness. Or right maybe now. he's going to say that donkey looks good on that donkey. Hopefully he doesn't say that, but he just might. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he just well, might. No. Who knows no. what's in store? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what I find interesting, I will say this. Um, you know, when we saw Grant during Gen season, he was very like he was definitely one of the more mature ones. So to have the I agree. drama and the kind of immaturity through that we're seeing through that one trailer, that one teaser, um, it's gonna be interesting to see how he handles that. It'll grow on us, you guys. You know, we're going to be watching that first episode. And then all of a sudden we're going to be sucked in just like we do every season. We're immediately sucked in and then, and then we're stuck. And then we have to talk about it all the time. (laughs) I have no problem with it. I have no problem. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's I hope he's happy at the end of the day. Right. Yes, exactly. And and it's going to be here before we know it. We're going to be talking about grand season on play in the field. And uh, what, what does our audience need to do if they love our podcast, Jen? Oh, like and follow us and remind them of tomorrow. Listen yes. tomorrow as well. We've got a bonus episode of Playing the Field this week with none other than the Golden Bachelorette herself, Joan, and her pick, Chalk, which uh, before we get to that interview, can I ask you ladies one question here in front of the audience? 
Have yes. we found out why his name is Chalk? I don't recall that being brought up at any point. Because if not, I am anxious to ask him that question because I have never heard of that name before. Let that be your first question. Yeah, yes. I really want to know. Do, do, we think, do we think that's a fair question? Because it's such a unique it's, name it's like a that I feel like there has to be a story be like, behind it. There has, yeah, I wonder if, if it's like a, a thing from childhood, maybe? I don't right. Know. I, I would love to know. I just wanted to be sure I didn't miss that in any part of the episodes where they talked about so. why is your name Chalk? So I, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to ask him that. Well, now I want to know. So yeah, yeah. please. Well, yeah, this is why people listen to this podcast to get the answers to these hard hitting questions. That's exactly it. Why is your name Chalk? What's the story behind it? We're going to ask him that question uh, and a whole bunch more when we have our Golden Bachelorette and her fiance on the next episode of Playing the Field. We can't wait for you to join us. Until then, for Jen and Gina, I'm Ryan. We'll see you for our bonus episode. Bye.